Hello, welcome back to Steps on the Spiritual Journey. I want to do this to do, um, because <laughs> I realize I'm not doing these in order, right, of like my actual life. I'm just like, whatever I feel like at the moment. <laughs> so we're going to go back, more origin story, backstory, if you will. <laughs> Is there going to be foreshadowing here? No, let me stop. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, if you have watched even my videos about the four elements and stuff like that, I touch on this a little bit, but I want to like talk about it more in depth here, which is when I was a child, um, I really was into like astrology and zodiac stuff with my grandma and uh, she had like a ridiculous amount of books on it and I used to just like snatch them up and then sometimes my mom would buy books like that and I would like read some of them even if she did or didn't or did not understand it um or not ex ex like understand it to that extent also like Oprah's book club low-key was lit back then so my mom was buying a lot of stuff she used to have like a $200 budget for books or something uh before we became poor so <laughs> that's when we still have money I feel like if I could cue music, I would cue the You're a rich girl and you come too far mm -mm -mm -mm. Anyway, you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, how you know my life? Um, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was rich as the rags So I feel like during those years when I would go to my grandma's house And uh, she liked all those types of things Those were really fun and I know that like I was surrounded by certain types of books too like my mom had like the seed of the soul and like uh, women who run with wolves and then like books about being on like like Alice Walker and stuff like that like woman like womanist theory right which is uh feminism but from the black woman perspective and some people say women of color too now we've uh extended that to that but for the most part especially about black women because you know i wholeheartedly believe that reincarnation is real i reincarnated here again as a black woman and i did come back through my bloodline so i have been my own ancestor thank you uh just don't remember which one in which lifetime and what particular time period necessarily always i mean sometimes spirit tries to give me little clues but i'd be like what uh <laughs> So, yeah, um, because it depends on what level that you're on in your soul reincarnation levels, depends on what perks you can get when you come back. So, like, you want to click randomize or bloodline, or are you forced to always come back through your bloodline? Uh, so that's a big one. And plus, me and my mom used to always have these, like, kind of crazy, like, spiritual conversations about this. Like, I remember when I was 12, I literally told people my first language is sarcasm and my slang is metaphors. What's up? I ain't changed. I ain't changed. So, if you're like, why is she constantly constantly using metaphors, um, TV shows, and, um, you know, like, different things like that. That is why I really want to be able to say things in a way that, like, if you wouldn't watch that TV show, you would understand what I was talking about. Or um, if you, I use a metaphor, you understand what I was talking about, right? Um, or even, oh, my favorite, breaking down certain phrases that everyone knows, but then finding, like, the back story to it. Um, so one good one is, blood is thicker than water. The full phrase actually is the blood of the covenant is stronger than the water of the womb. What? So it means the opposite of how people freaking use it. The blood of the covenant. The covenant. Some people will be like, oh, that's witches. Uh, you got to like get into a witch group, which it's nothing wrong with witches. So don't hate. First of all. Second of all. A covenant of people also you would think of as community right so your chosen family basically who are the people who you live your everyday life with your blood sweat and tears go into the everyday life these people care about you they give a fuck about you and the same for you right so these are your ride or die bitches <laughs> right and they might be blood 
Um, they might be related to you or not, but you blood in. So like gangs, um, military, um, church communities, all those are covenants, boo. Like even certain workplaces, because those are the people you see all the time. Like uh, um, what's a good show? Oh, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy would do that shit all the time. These are the people in your class, and you're all the same doctors. Y'all in a covenant now, because these people you see constantly, and you give a fuck about, and they're your best friends, and you, you know, Meredith and Christina, you're my person. They were in a covenant together. <sighs> Anyways. So, um, so they're saying that the blood of the covenant <laughs> is stronger than the water of the womb. So the womb, the womb means people you're related to your family okay so you can have family members who get their water of the womb but they're in the blood covenant with you as well because you keep up with them so that's why family members who are real close you know have that double whammy which is super nice right because it's like oh it's water of the womb and blood of the covenant uh, 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 we got both we got both we just up here but what so <laughs> That's super freaking awesome when you can get that trifecta A. Um, but not everyone can. Some people, because of whatever situations and their family being fake, they ain't cool. So that's why the covenant's more important. Uh, so ooh, that's why I think it's very important for um me doing videos like this in a sense because I really think it's important for like people to understand that kind of thing. So anyways, getting back to my water of the womb grandmother, uh, who is in the blood of my covenant with me, like, right? <laughs> um, in my immediate family, I feel like really is. And so like my mom, my siblings, that kind of thing. It's so nice to have that kind of bonding experience together. Um, and being able to over time talk about stuff so i feel like me and my mom used to talk about that too and like we're here to raise the feminine energy and like all that kind of stuff no obviously when i was a kid i didn't say it like that originally i was like the ladies or girls or like girl power was really big in the 90s you know spice girls rented that too many times selena rented it too many times what was you watching you know yeah i had sailor moon and xena warrior princess and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which was, and still to this day, is one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, Charmed, shit, even Gilmore Girls, boom, boom. But then we got also a small white people, black people. We got Moesha. We got, we got the Proud Family. We got, we got the Parkers. So I get like, you know, have different sections, I guess, for different things. Um... But yeah, so, and as you can tell, a lot of that was mystical. So that's why I said the first ones, because, but then I remembered in that moment, like, ooh, but they all white women, which mm, would come into a better time. So we're getting more black ladies. Like, oh my gosh, when I saw on the sci-fi channel Dutch from, um, uh, girl, you was about to say dark matter. Don't say that. Killjoys, thank you. Um, with Killjoys, I was like, black lady, pilot of the ship, who run shit, badass, assassin, level, clearance of what? Anyways, it was just really nice, <laughs> all these years, like, we out here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, real, real nice to have that. So just knowing that those are the type of things I was really into. And then later finding out that the American version of Sailor Moon was super straight, but the Asian version, uh, super queer. And I was like, oh, oh, where are my fellow polysexual people, AKA bi or pansexual? Uh, <laughs> we out here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, and then like a lot of queer women fucking love some Xena or Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so it was like inevitable. But anyways, one of those things, like I feel like it's not that the show made you gay, you watched the show because your ass was gay. <laughs> but that's, that's what 
a joke for another time. Not super, super serious, but mm, mm, maybe. Okay. So, but yeah, so there's just little things here and there that I just feel like spiritually, like I will explain stuff through TV shows, through my childhood and, uh, you know, through my adulthood to explain stuff. Um, and also like these metaphors and things and being able to use these different shows and symbols and whatnot to explain what it is because that's what communication is about right you can be speaking english and someone else is speaking english but you have different dialects or your definition for words are different and so you're not communicating because i define the word blank this way but you define the word blank this way so then when we're using these words we're not thinking the same thing what so are we really communicating <laughs> that's why there's some people who think that the fact that we use so many words is super fucking unhelpful for humankind because there are so many things that are non-verbals that almost get certain situations and points across then verbally um especially when it comes to relationships and love and stuff you know does your heart race you know did you get the the stomach whatever did someone touch you and you get the the goosebumps right more than i like you you're pretty <laughs> <All right. laughs> what did you feel <laughs> what did you feel boo <laughs> you're my best friend why because my heart warms when i see you like i get excited i'm like hey friend or we see them oh my god is it this like, there's not a lot of words happening there. Okay, so <laughs> a lot of nonverbals can still get the point across, right? So, um, that's why I feel like um, I'm so happy that I'm a Scorpio sun and rising, but I'm also born in the generation of Scorpio, aka Pluto, the Pluto and Scorp gen. <laughs> aka millennials because if you're born between 1983 and 1995 you are a pluto and scorpio so what's up that's literally millennials so for all of our born in 83 millennials i know you are probably tired of people acting like you a fucking child when you like bitch i'm grown and i got kids i know but that's because you're lumped in with the people who born in 95 so <laughs> we're still a generation together but uh yeah so a lot of us are gonna remember different things right and i feel like even when dating i used to always date people like born in the mid to late 80s uh and i've dated a few not in my generation right you were born in like what 77 no oh, okay 81 no oh, okay um you know but uh yeah i just still feel like but now I'm old enough to like actually date people younger than me and it's kind of like blowing my mind. But like, what? I'm the older one this time? Am I going from a kitten to a cougar? <laughs> What's up, baby? Uh, even though like I still feel like certain ages sometimes be almost too young. I'm just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but I had to get over it, get over it. So anyways, coming back to the original point though, because I went on tangent again. Um, yeah, so this is about the metaphors. So yeah, metaphors are super fucking helpful when it comes to spiritual chatting. Because what happens is, is that the collective consciousness is about things that it's just like, we all know, we all believe, we know this is the business, right? And so using these phrases is almost like spell work in a sense, because it is... You know, that's why, like, in movies, when you're like, we're going to say this spell in Latin. You know, witches are always saying spells in Latin. And I used to be like, oh, so annoying. But then I realized it's because Latin is a dead language. And it's easier to use dead languages for spell work and affirmations just because when it comes to language that people speak, so it's alive, means you can keep adding different slang. You can have different dialects and certain words change. That's why dictionaries, you can get a dictionary from the 1800s 
versus a dictionary from the early 1900s versus a dictionary right now, certain words do change. Certain words have do definitions. Certain words are added. So what happens is, is like, yeah, 200 years ago when someone used the phrase blah, 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 that meant blank. But now you don't know that now that would mean blank. So that's why a lot of times you see that in spell work when people use Latin, it would be because that word is always going to fucking mean that because no one actually speaks it regularly. Because once you speak it regularly, it can change because of whatever current environment stuff, right? Because we're always growing and things like that as the human race. So it doesn't mean you can't do spell work without doing it in Latin, obviously. But understanding what your beliefs are and where you're coming from and the definitions of words are important. That's why like in tarot and something like that, I have certain tarot books where they might, the little booklet give you five words and you're like, the fuck you gave me five words? The other book gave me fucking paragraphs paragraphs but then you look and you see why because you go google those words those words all mean another you know group of um what is it synonyms and uh there's examples in the dictionary for it so you'll be like opulence what does that mean but then you google it and you're like oh sh i didn't even know there was all this behind the word opulence. Okay, so that's what that means. So that's why those books do that because even though they put five words, once you Googled all those words, you just learned. You do got your paragraphs now, right? So they're like saving time. So the same thing with shortened phrases. Shortened phrases and metaphors and stuff are supposed to be for that same reason. We all get it. This is high context situation so you know when you have an in joke with your friend you know it's an in joke because all i have to say is girl blue skies and then my friend will be like ah, hell yeah someone else will be like what the fuck does blue skies mean but then we both know that it was from that episode of dow house when she turns into the assassin and then she gets the call and it erases her memory and then she's like fuck and then and then they're like oh fuck she's back in doll state instead of the parallel person she's supposed to be pretending to be anyways if you've seen dow house you, you will know more about it but anyways i love me some joss wheaton uh, he made Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but he also made a bunch of other shows, and Dow House is one of them. And in Dow House is the idea that there's these people that sign up for five years to have their mind basically, like, every, all their thoughts, feelings, everything that's ever fucking happened to them gets put onto a disc, and they're put back into the childlike state of just like, like if you had amnesia, you know how people who have amnesia, they just come out like, who am I? I know nothing. They literally just don't know shit. Like, they know how to talk, they know words, but they have no memories, right? And so that's basically what Dallas State was. So it was like, and so then people who wanna go on dates with them or do weird military things or wanna have a secret spy or, but mostly dating. Um, uh, MI, MRI scans from different personalities will be put together in a certain way to make a new personality and they would download that personality into you and then you would believe you are that person. So in the blue skies is like, oh yeah, the set, the cool bank robbie person was like, blue skies, blue skies. Uh -uh. And then they got the wipe and it was like, are you my mommy? <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. Anyways, so again, it's high context because I had to explain that whole thing for you, right? For you to even know kind of what that is, but you still would need to watch the fucking show to really get the joke, right? Like there's a lot of explanation. And so like comedians have to go through this, right? They can use certain high context words, but then use a lot of generalization, low context words, and kind of like lead you on a beautiful storytelling trip that makes you laugh and is just like super awesome and cool so that's why um <laughs> i love metaphors right because if you know that and it's a collective kind we all know that like um 
is important but like i said there's certain things that get confuddled along the way and so i used to think that that's why like even in christianity the idea of why like islam had to come through is because like muhammad had to come and be like so like christ consciousness is important and you know but there's some stuff homeboy forgot about and also i need to re revise some things from the bible and now we got the quran right like so sometimes right like it's even in spiritual terms someone has to come through and i used to believe go with me for a second here but that the that say that was you in a past life like and you say you were gandhi in a past life and you came back and was like reading some shit Gandhi wrote and was like, um, he clearly meant this, this, and this. And someone else is like, I'm a scholar and I've read all his work and that's and he actually meant this. And you because you come in like, um actually, uh, actually this means blank 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 blank. And you just know that real good either because your ass really was Gandhi in a past life, or Gandhi, the ascendant master, is talking to you through the ether because you are just one of the vessels who can get who can channel Gandhi um, or you're from the bloodline of Gandhi or something right then that's why you're like uh, actually y'all confuddled his words he did not mean it like that you're not understanding the context um, <laughs> right and so that's why we have people who come and revise things also uh, we have people who because modern technology has changed it needs to be upgraded the message is still the same it needs to be upgraded also upgrade just means most shit has changed we, you we didn't have that before like if someone didn't have cars 300 years ago then stuff related to cars and their theory isn't there because cars didn't exist so that's why someone has to divine oh but if cars did exist this is what this person would have thought so anyways that's why um, I think they're also important to keep up with because, like I said, they can be upgraded, they can be explained better, they can be extrapolated on what's up. And so sometimes I have things like that that I'm just like, clearly that needs to be upgraded. And then there's other things that I'll be like, oh, I'm not supposed to upgrade it, but I feel like someone is. I feel like someone is supposed to do this. These people are out here. <laughs> and then there's other things that I just feel like, y'all got that wrong and I'm just so excited to find out you know what that is so like my earlier example about you know blood is thicker than water when i found that shit out i said oh what this whole time this whole time anyways anyways so i just was like damn so that wasn't me obviously who realized something or whatever it's just i found that information now i gotta tell everybody i'm just like everybody need to know everybody 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 so now you know <laughs> uh so yeah so just what else what else what else oh so astrology and things like that their astrology is in every culture we all looked up at the stars and made the same freaking animals to a certain extent and i think i brought up before like how the greeks were like the ones who like were so close to the mediterranean you're near northern africa europe and the middle east so you can have all these ideas come together and study them but there's other cultures other places like someone else in papua new guinea or someone who was like aztec and or some or you know some kind of indigenous person of the americas central south whatever north then they might have said the story meant this right so i was looking at this thing about like the different greek mythologies about the zodiac signs but then i looked up this thing one day and it was telling me about certain other cultures and so you'll notice that maybe there were certain similar underlining currents to a lot of them and then some of them no not that much similar but but maybe like the moral of the story is the same but like or a certain action was the same like a good example because i'm a scorpio i love to you know find out stuff about this so like their big one that they use a lot is the orion story about like hunter go kill him because he wants to kill every you know uh, well no 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 wants to kill at least one animal of each species just to prove 
that he's the best hunter of all the hunters or whatever and then uh the gods are like calm that down don't do that like one boar one horse one th that's too much you're doing too you're doing too much so your ass down you know and um and so uh scorpion was taken and enlarged giantly and then they sicked it on him or whatever but there's other stories where the scorpion is just sicked on to people so the point is is that i don't give a fuck where you go scorpio is the is the assassin that you hire to like take someone out like I just, it just was like it was every time one was a goddess and she had a cheating husband and she made the scorpio <laughs> the scorpion go kill that person it's like scorpio is always killing some asshole for someone for someone else so the, you know and so i used to wonder like as a kid like i was so obsessed with also like every criminal minds show law and order svu uh snapped um the secret lives of women uh taboo <laughs> weird documentaries especially sex worker documentaries sex workers or sex or human trafficking um <laughs> what else yeah a who done it i actually let's go to the basics of it a who done it me and my dad used to always watch like diagnosis murder uh all the star wars movies die hearts lethal weapons i just love sh guns and shit blowing up because of it i love me some slow motion <laughs> fighting scenes what's up hey <laughs> and um yeah just a good detective series like uh, oh 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 agatha christie's uh poirot oh my gosh read some of the books love the british tv show oh rosemary and time such a good fucking show man rosemary and i love the play on words like those are both herbs but then they were actually the name of two characters two older women and I, it's so cute because it's like Oh, I was a professor for 30 years and then they didn't give me tenure because they said I was getting too old, bitch. And then the other lady was like, oh, I was in the police force, but then I got pregnant and my husband was too. So then I stayed home with the kids and then he leaves me for another, another woman, but he's a police captain. So I sacrificed my career for what? And so they both had this like so yeah being the career woman who had no kids versus being the woman who did have kids were still fucked let's just hang out with each other and be bfs forever hey. um and then they go around gardening and solving crimes it's so fucking good it's so fucking good anyways <laughs> it's dry british humor so be ready if you're not into dry british humor not for you but um yeah so good oh i love who done it so but Poirot is my dude though I am not French I am Belgium Woo! I love it every time so <laughs> he was just coming there I was like I want to be Poirot I just want to come in there and be like I don't care that nobody likes me but I'm about to solve this motherfucking case even though you guys think I'm weird and I I have weird taste and I wear wear weird clothes and I like weird food I'm still smart as fuck and I'm about to come in here and solve this shit. Anyways, I just was like, oh, so cool. An asshole version of that would be Sherlock Holmes or House. But um, a nice version of it is Poirot. So I was like, I don't want to be the asshole. I want to be the nice one. You know, he's just a funny, weird little man. And I'm like, yes, I'm quirky and weird too. I like that. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So that just goes down to that like, yeah yeah it's like you know i'm not i'm the person who like wants to track down the serial killer like i don't know it's weird it's like it goes back to the scorpio shit i'm just like damn this whole time this whole time so <laughs> the ether been trying to tell me so yeah um but these last couple years was also reminding me that like because you love people though it's like poro will get his little crushes but like you know or you know people have their things but like they're just really obsessed with like solving the crime and and like helping the people and so sometimes i forget that 
it's not always about the chase or the hunt it's about who you're doing it for because i've always said that the root of all evil is fear and people will come for me on this and i've been saying this shit since i was like 10 i saw this movie and some bitch had it in like on a frame and i was like mom no i don't believe that the root okay so the house is not burning down yay so <laughs> um so yeah so the root of all evil i've always said was fear and then later i tried to act like well i mean no because sometimes fear has made people do acts of bravery too so maybe i should let that go like or maybe i was wrong and then recently the reason why i'm putting it in this video is because not true not true bitch was right the first time me me right first time fear is still the root of all evil first of all bravery comes from this this when a lot of times when people save someone in a crazy disaster or whatever they usually say oh they would have done the same for me so a lot of times bravery comes from love so what is the opposite of evil love so what is the opposite of fear love right okay so we don't move out of fear we do not operate out of fear operate out of love and then you will be courageous you shall be brave and you won't fall down the rabbit hole of evil boom 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 yeah so that was like i feel like my last thing on that so i know it's like a thing to say hey time for this video to be over so yeah so those are my last things so yeah so money is not the root of all evil actually fear is and um now you learn something new about blood is thicker than water my black ass it's actually the blood of the covenant is stronger than the water of the womb you're welcome and also astrology has been in every fucking group it's a collective consciousness thing so we all look at the stars that was like a moment in men in black even though he had amnesia because he went through the neuralizer he still knew that he knew what the fuck was out there didn't matter even though you supposedly erased it from his brain he felt it in his body when you know you fucking know when you know you fucking know and i be knowing shit okay <laughs> like and guess what you probably know some shit too but society or some people or some dumb shit got you fucked up and you didn't think it no more but think about when you were a kid what's some shit that you just knew and you realize that shit is still on point out of the mouths of babes my babe out of the mouths of babes okay we all have little baby geniuses inside of us oh my gosh that was the last thing when i saw the movie baby geniuses as a child i was like clearly this is like reality i was like when when they have it where the kids know everything i mean everything 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 and then once you're able to start speaking you lose it all and then you kind of spend the rest of your life trying to get that knowledge back and um if you choose to and certain child prodigies were just people who didn't let go of all that information i really wholeheartedly did believe that and i still fucking do that's why children and the elderly are the closest to the spiritual realm because some people just left and some people about to enter okay so it's no coincidence that certain diseases target them because <sighs> you know something just saying also children are stalkers who live in your house i also said that to my mom one day as a child i was like i know i'm a kid but i really do think that we're kind of like stalkers who live in your home because <laughs> have you ever seen a child try on your clothes or put on your shoes i'm like you mommy um <laughs> where are you going don't little kids ask you that when you leave where are you going where are you going right i always want to know where are you at where are you going Cause you need to feed me and like watch me and care about me so
<laughs> They're cute little stalkers, right? Yeah. And uh, what's another one? Oh, babies are adorable parasites. Because if you actually look up the definition of a parasite, it's like a thing that cannot take care of itself and latches itself to a host until it can take care of itself. And you think about it, even after birth, it just becomes like, well, it's still kind of one because you still can't survive as a baby without people. <laughs> right like giraffes they come out the womb and they're walking they're already walking they literally get popped out and they're walking our ass take like a whole nother couple of years so we're cute little parasites we're adorable <laughs> but still yeah um anyways i just wanted to say that because it desensitizes the word sometimes we get so caught up on like so mean and it was not mean it's like science <laughs> like i'm not even saying it in a mean way i'm just saying like facts but whatever anyways you're taking it that way it's not my fault i was a cute parasite too so were you shut up uh it's how i be feeling but then i don't want to like hurt your little feelings so i'm just like you know i keep that as an inside joke with the friends but yeah like i still be like y'all don't see that though anyways so that was just a few more, just, just a few more, just to put that down. But they're so cute though, they're so cute. It's just, you're supposed to grow out of that shit. You're supposed to grow out of being a parasite, you're supposed to grow out of being a stalker. Some people don't, and that shit is scary. But the rest of us, please, please, let's hope we all grow out of that shit. Again, growing. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just for flowers okay and it's not just for your height it's also for your mental health just saying expand your mind super fun so yeah so anyways this spiritual series of you know shit i believe i believe you're the child is one to get kind of some of the stuff off my chest to like that's how i felt so that as i go to my next steps um you know like, these were my step ones and twos and threes. So that way, when you see me on step 10, you'll be like, wow, look at that growth. Not like I was completely fucking wrong before or something, but just like, I could see how you went from there to there to there to there to there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's, in here, there's some foreshadowing for the future. Hey. <laughs> Storytelling. Hey, hey, hey. I love that in shows. I'd be like, oh. <gasps> Did you see how they panned over the newspaper and it said August 13th? That's going to be important again later. And then like 30 minutes later in the show, they're like, because you don't understand that that's when on August 13th that my parents ended up in the car accident. And then that's how I ended up in the thing. And I'm like, ooh, that foreshadowing was good. See, they tried to tell us earlier in the episode that that shit was going to happen. They got us primed. They got us ready for it. That's also really good for shaping and psychology. You know, getting you a little inch closer and closer closer so yeah spirituality and psychology together uh <laughs> no wonder i got this psychology degree i was just like so obsessed but uh okay so that should be it that's it that's now we're done okay so that's what we have today for this installment of my spiritual journey it's me rambling about it but Hopefully you learned something cool or you thought this was interesting or you thought it was funny or I just entertained you or what the fuck ever. Do you like my personality? I don't care. <laughs> but if you do, yay, come on to the crew. We have cupcakes in the back. But um, I think I'm going to have a few more that are going to come back to reality so to speak, aka now time. But I just thought I should do another one that's like talking about more of my backstory. Again, I'm using more <laughs> storytelling terminology here. But yeah, I just thought it would be good to be out here a little bit more about like, I'm so happy this Scorpio Pluto generation is on this shit because it's like I would be into this shit as a kid. And I remember actually, let me talk about how spirit come through. I remember reading a section that has said like people will not understand you as a child but when you are an adult they will understand you and i remember 
like not understanding what that meant and it was because it was trying to say me being a Scorpio son and being in this generation that yeah I was gonna seem weird as a kid but once everyone else grew into the same Scorpio principles that our generation is influenced by then all the shit that I do did it as a kid as hobbies is now going to be shit that people think is cool when they get older you know when I found my first tarot deck I literally was in this like black centric like um uh shop cafe thing uh in Detroit where when I was living there and I remember I kept staring at these cards and I walked away and I looked at them and I felt like they were like looking at me and it's like how can cards look at you but they were and the lady was like well sometimes the cards find you you don't find them and I was like what never heard of that so I started looking and I was just like these are calling to me though they are calling to me and those those were my first tarot deck and you know I still you know used them for a long time until some of them got messed up because Again, for the cleansing cards and don't just let any ass asshole touch them. But then I rebought them uh, this year, so I got them back. So yeah, this was the original deck I got when I was like 15, 16. So uh, being into this astrology shit with my grandma, you know, my grandma used to be like, ah, oh, you know, me, you, and your grandfather are all Scorpio risings. And I used to be like, what? But she's a Gemini, he's a Leo, I don't get it. <laughs> now i do everyone talks about that now but she used to always tell me that like all three of us are scorpio risings and i'm like but i'm a scorpio sun and she's like yes yeah, scorpio sun and i'm a gemini sun he's a leo sun but we're all scorpio risings and i was just like still don't get it but okay and then when i read in the book i was a capricorn moon i used to ignore the shit out of that i'd be like i don't know what that means don't care and um, but then all of a sudden i wake up one day and everybody else care and i was just like oh so now you bitches think it's cool when i thought it was cool and nobody else thought it was cool but now y'all think it's cool too so i wanted to be an asshole and be like well i don't want to do it no more because now y'all want to be on it you wasn't on it when i was on it fucking bitch you know i was the one at those motherfucking you know uh summer camps and finding everyone sign out and people being like, oh, that's not real. That's not even ever. And I'm like, what's your birthday? And so now it's cool. Whatever. Anyways, but then I was like, don't be petty. Be happy that they're finally on the bandwagon. So that's being optimistic instead of pessimistic, right? Pessimism would have been, oh, oh, so y'all want to get on it now. Late. <sighs> had to be patient they was gonna come to the side you just had to be patient <laughs> oh my gosh this is how trailblazers feel when bitches are late as hell um yeah so but at least it's not like then go and like you're famous after you die so that's a positive right like at least you know what i mean like there's a whole doctor who episode where they literally put him in a time machine so they could see how cool he is because he, he lived his whole life not knowing cut off his own ear going crazy not knowing how cool he was so sometimes you cool as hell people just ain't ready for you yet but you want some next fucking level shit and if you're a saturn and aquarius friend you definitely on some next level shit us Saturn Aquariuses are going to be saying shit that people still not going to understand until a fucking 200 years from now. Can I get an amen? Can I get a faux show? Can I get an ashe? Can I get a bitch you right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I don't care if I get five views on this 200, 2000 because I already know one day, <laughs> one day someone's going to be like, damn, she was speaking some motherfucking truth some motherfucking truth anyways so that's why i can take my time making them and I really you know would love for people to watch it but i'm not pressed <laughs> not so yeah so anyways so how does this help you because if you're watching this you're either trying to be entertained you really do believe what i'm talking about or because you want to learn something and what you can learn is what in your life are you not pressed about but you fucking know that shit you know no i mean you know you know, but you know. <laughs> are you on that next level stuff 
And believing in yourself is very important. Because how, how else is anyone else going to believe in you if you don't even believe in you? I know it seems so easy to say, just so difficult to do. Because sometimes things are simple but hard. And other things are complicated yet easy. It's really weird, but it happens, okay? Like, it's very simple to quit smoking. You just stop, right? But then no one ever just stops. Right. Like, you know, it's like, I need a nicotine patch and I need a, 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 all this other stuff. And really, t -t -t technically, you should be able to just like, one day just put them down, right? It's not that easy. So it's simple, but it's hard, right? So that's why I'm saying, like, take your time with yourself, but understand, like, we out here, we know stuff. Gotta share it. Even if they ain't even ready. Even if they ain't even ready. Because we do it with little kids all the time. We'll tell them a concept in third grade. Tell them again in sixth grade. Tell them again in eighth grade. Tell them again in eleventh grade. Hopefully we'll do a, a college class on it. But you don't remember when you did that shit in elementary school. But you don't know that was the building blocks. That was the foundation. Right? Like grammar. Do you know how to use a semicolon? I'm telling you. They tried to tell you at one point. Your ass was like, I don't get it. Shit. Most of us still don't know how to use that bitch. Okay. So it's not just grammar, friend. Right? It's just not just grammar. Also, if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you don't write a lot, you might have known and you forgot. So, again, reawakening 11111 is usually about, well, maybe you knew that when you were 15, but now you're... 35 <laughs> or you're 75 yeah ass forgot and now spirits come back to remind you that's why you keep seeing one 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 every time that thing comes up that person talks that song comes on the radio it's to jog your memory to remind you of who the fuck you are and what the fuck you know just saying it's happened to me multiple times because <laughs> i remember i used to hear what c111 as a kid in the car and they'd be like, ooh, that's special. I know that 111 means something special. And I never knew if it was super spiritual. I just thought it was like a happy coincidence if you could find it. Or like, ooh, serendipitous. Like, oh, that's so cool. You caught it when it said 111. Completely forgot about that. Then I got older and everyone was into the 111. And then, I, and then later, my mom and me were talking about something. And I was like, oh, so we did do that. So that was a thing. We was on it so early! <laughs> so early! How can you be early to the party and leave? And then when you come back, you late. That is me. It's like, this party's at 8 o'clock, but you got there at 6. And you're like, oh, it's at 8? So either you go home and you don't come back till like 9 or 10, and bitches are like, the party started at 8. Bitch, you don't know I was here at 6. It was early as fuck went back home. <laughs> so now I'm late, but whatever. <laughs> That's how I be feeling about when I do certain things. It was like I was early, then I was late. It doesn't make sense, but I did it. Scorpio contradictory. It happens. Anyways, now we're done. I bet you I said I was done with this video 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, but I wasn't. But now I am, okay? So I love you. I love a me. I love us. I love we. I'll see you again soon.